Okay, let's look first at Psalm 19, verse 7. King James Version says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Makes you Reminds you of uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, which talks about the law being our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. But look at the NIV. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. Not converting, just merely reviving the soul. Not the same thing. Okay, Psalm 68, verse 15. King James Version says, The hill of God is as the hill of Bashan, and high hill as the hill of Bashan. Okay, let's look at the NIV. The mountains of ba Bashan are majestic mountains. Rugged are the mountains of Bashan. What about the hill of God? Why would they take out the hill of God? Seems kind of peculiar. Uh, Psalm 68, verse 17. King James Version says, the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. Alright, let's look at the more modern NIV. The chariots of God are tens of thousands and thousands of thousands. What about thousands of angels? The Lord has come from Sinai into his sanctuary. Why would they take out the thousands of angels? Is that a more modern updated reading? Psalm 72 verse 5 They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. Okay? You aren't going to believe what the NIV has to say about this. He will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, through all generations. Well, if you look up uh, there in Peter, it talks about the sun and the moon passing away. Let's look at this. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. So apparently, according to the NIV, they say that he will endure as long as the sun and the moon. So in other words, when the elements, when the heavens pass away with a great noise, I guess that's the end of God, according to the NIV. You talk about blasphemy. Psalm 109, verse 6. Let's look at another one. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. Okay. What does the NIV have to say? Well, let's look. Appoint an evil man to oppose him. Let an accuser stand at his right hand. An accuser. Okay. Well, that could be anybody. I know Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Yeah, I know that. But why would they take the name Satan out there and just say an accuser? Okay. Psalm 145, verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Okay? Look at the NIV. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. So apparently God loves everybody. Doesn't matter if they're rejecting Jesus Christ. Oh no, God loves everybody. Loving toward all he has made. That is a lie. That's not what the Bible teaches. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 36. Here we have the King James Version. Uh, but he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Okay, you sin against God, you will wrong your own soul. Because you'll go to hell for all of eternity. Look at the NIV. But whoever fails to find me harms himself. Himself. Not your soul. All who hate me love death. The big difference between harming yourself and wronging your soul. Look at the next one, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. Here's another good one. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh, sticketh closer than a brother. If you want friends, you have to be friendly, is what the King James Version is saying. What's the NIV say? A man of many companions may come to ruin, <laughs> but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Okay, so you shouldn't have very many friends, according to the NIV. It might bring you to ruin. It's ridiculous. Look at the next one, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 18. Okay, chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. Okay, you are to spank your children. What does the NIV say? Discipline your son, for in that there is hope, do not, do not be a willing party to his death. <laughs> okay, so King James Version has crying, and the NIV says death. Uh, it's a little bit of a difference there. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 25. 
Okay, it is a snare to the man who devoureth that which is holy, and after vows to make inquiry. Okay, what does the NIV say? It is a trap for a man to dedicate something rashly, and only later to consider his vows. So the NIV says dedicate something rashly, King James Version says devoureth that which is holy. Big difference. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 10. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. Okay, he causes the sun to light on the righteous as well as the sinner. Okay, what does it say in the NIV? Like an archer who wounds at random is he who hires a fool or any passerby. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you have God versus an archer. Okay, interesting. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 8. Here we have another attack, but uh, it says, There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. No man has power over the spirit to retain the spirit. But look at the NIV. No man has power over the wind to contain it. Well, let me read a little verse here in the New Testament. Mark chapter 4 verse 41 and they feared exceedingly and said one to another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him Jesus had power over the wind to contain it okay why would the NIV do this the King James Version says about power over the spirit but the NIV changes it to power over the wind it's ridiculous and again it's another subtle little attack on Jesus Christ, on the deity of Jesus Christ. There is a very, very wicked, evil spirit in the pages of an NIV. Okay, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13. The King James Version gives the location of God's throne. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. You want to know where God's throne is at? It's in the north. Okay? Let's look at the NIV. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. So it's no longer the sides of the north. They take away the location of God's throne. Why? I find that very, also very interesting. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 23. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. Okay, NIV. Surely the idolatrous commotion on the hills and mountains is a deception. <laughs> okay, so you have in vain is salvation hoped for in the King James Version. In the NIV it's idolatrous commotion on the hills. Okay. Daniel chapter 6 verse 7 All the presidents of the kingdom the governors and the princes and the counselors the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days save of thee O king he shall be cast into the den of lions Look at the NIV The royal administrators prefects satraps advisors and governors have all agreed that the king and on and on but uh, I thought the NIV was supposed to update archaic language so the King James Version says presidents NIV says royal administrators King James Version says princes NIV prefects King James Version says counselors and the NIV says satraps uh, you talk about archaic the NIV is a lot more archaic than the King James Version counselor versus satrap right Hosea chapter 11, verse 12. Ephraim compasseth me about with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit. But, but Judah yet ruleth with God, and is faithful with the saints. Now watch this little, slut, this little swipe at the Jews here with the NIV. Ephraim has surrounded me with lies, the house of Israel with deceit, and Judah is unruly against God, even against the faithful Holy One. So the King James Version says that Judah yet ruleth with God. The NIV says Judah is against God. 